Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss the first six problems of court forces round 874 which was written for division 3. So if by the end of this video, you feel that this video was helpful for you or if you were able to derive any value from this video, then consider dropping a like on this video and also share your thoughts in the comments, what you felt about today's problems or any general thing you would like to share with us. Because like your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video was actually helpful for you and this video will be able to reach more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So today's problems I felt were more on the implementation side like there was the logic of the problems was not very difficult it's just that you had to like implement them correctly right. So I did some, I did waste some time on the F problem but uh, I was still able to submit it just before the contest ended so yeah. Let us quickly start with the first problem. The first problem says that we have some characters A, B, C, D, E, F and G, right. So we can create a melody, right. So we can create a melody by uh, like uh, compiling exactly two notes together. So if, if you write two notes like A and B and B and A, both of them together are called melodies, right. Now uh, we can uh, uh, like merge two melodies and form a new bigger melody and it is only possible when the second note of the first melody is equal to the first note of the second melody only then we can merge them and after merging the middle one will be like written only once and then the first and the last will remain as it is right so we have to keep merging them like this and we have to tell what are the total number of unique melodies that we need to uh, take so that we can form the final melody like this a b a b right so this this string will be given to us and let, let me just show you with this particular thing with the help of an example so they say that this is the test case So again, uh, they say like uh, we have a melody A, B and A, B, right. This is the final thing that we want to form. So first of all, we will take A, B, right. Now, since I want to form A, B, A, first of all, I would focus on A, B, A. To form A, B, A, I would need B, A, why? Right? Because when this is same and this is same, only in that particular case, these two will be able to merge and we will be able to form A, B, A, right. So uh, till now, I have taken A, B and B, A. Now, I, I want to extend it further by adding A, B. So I will have to use AB so that these two are equal and the final string will be AB AB right. So the total number of unique melodies that I have taken is two. So one is AB and other one is BA right. This is what you have to do again AB A C A B A right. If we discuss this we would have to take AB and then we will take BA and then we will take AC then we will take CA and then we will take AB and then again take B right. So that these two are same 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 right. So I form A, B, then this A will be combined A, B, A, then this C will be combined C, then this A will be combined A, this B will be combined B, and this A will be combined A, right. So I have formed the original given string that was in the input. And the uh, strings that I have taken is, the melodies that I have taken is A, B, B, A, A, C, C, A, and A, B, B. So A, B, and B, A are already taken here. So in total, we need four of them. So the answer for this particular test case is four. Right, you can see it here. So how we can solve this? So first of all, the like you will have to take at least one string that is AB, right? That is the starting two characters, right? So if you want to find what will be the next string, what you just do is you take the last character and add the current character to it. So the next string will be BA, right? And after it, the next string will be you take the last character from here and take the next character AC, right? You will be able to find all the characters or all the melodies that you need, and you can just push them all into a set. And the, cells, the size of the set will denote the number of unique melodies that we need, right. So this is exactly what I did during the contest. Let me just show you. So this is the answer. What I've done is I've initialized my n and s variables. So I've taken the input n and the size of the string s. Now I initialize my answer with 1 and I mark my index as 2. So I will be storing the index. Now I've created a set called taken and I'm take, uh, creating a string called take. So I'm just inserting this particular s of 0, s of 1 into the take a string. Now I've just pushed in like inserted this particular take string into my taken set. Now while i is less than n, I, I find what is the next string that I'll have to take and that will be equals to s of i minus 1 that is the last string that I've character that I've taken and plus s of i that is the new character that I'm going to take. So these two characters together will form the new melody that I have to take. Now I will insert this particular melody into my uh, taken set and I'll increment my i. So at the end, I will just print the size of my set and this will be my final answer, right. 
so let us uh, have a look at the second question now so let me just explain you here what they are saying so uh, they have given an array a and they have given an array b right so let us uh, assume for now that this is day 1 this is day 2 this is day 3 this is day 4 so if they have some value x and y here so the absolute difference between x and y is always less than or equal to some value k right this is what they are saying but unfortunately what has happened is this array b is not in the correct order right so there might be some x1 value here and y1 value here for this x1 and y1 x1 minus y1 would have been less than equals to k right but since this array b is not in its correct order we would want to find any such order that is a valid ordering for a and b right they have also given us the like uh, an assurance that this is always true for the correct order of b right so there will exist at least one order for which for all i x i minus y i and if you take the absolute value will be less than equal to k so they say that there exists at least one valid ordering and we have to find any such ordering of the array b now uh, like this uh, question you didn't even need the value of k and we will see how we can solve this question without even um, requiring the value of k so for example x1 was here and y1 was here let's say last the last element is xn and the last element in this array is y right so let's say these were the correct two elements so let me denote that this is the smallest element in the array a and this is the smallest element in array b right if we took if we take the smallest element in both of them then again the difference between them will be less than equals to k this is like this is something that has been given to us in the question why we are taking uh, like the smallest element because like uh, if i take this particular element right and if i start taking any element from the second array y2 y3 y4 right so if i do this particular value x1 minus y1 and then x1 minus y2 and then x1 minus y3 you will see when i keep on moving to the right side this value this particular value will keep on increasing right this particular value will keep on increasing so the, so my best shot is to take x1 and y1 where x1 is the smallest element in the array a and y1 is the smallest array in the element is the smallest element in the array b right so my best uh, shot is to take the smallest element in both of them similarly uh, with the same logic in on the counter side i can take the greatest element in array a and greatest element in array b so let's say we have taken these two aside right now for the remaining of the elements the the condition should be still true right so uh, like the the condition that xi minus yi is less than equals to k will still be applicable to the remaining elements right assuming that we are taking the current elements we have taken the correct elements out of the ordering now the remaining elements should also satisfy the same condition and if i apply the same uh, technique that i use here i can again separate two more from here right so i can keep on doing this and my answer will be like uh, my final answer can be i can take all the elements of a in sorted order and i can take all the elements of b in sorted order right so this is what i am going to do and this will always form a valid ordering of both of the arrays a and b now the thing is uh, when i sort both of the arrays a so let's say no, their their ordering changes right so their ordering changes something like this so i will have to take care of this that the answer b1 will be stored at index 3 the answer b2 will be stored at index 1 because a1 was not actually here a was was present at here at this particular position so the answer b2 should be stored here answer b1 should be stored here and so on right so you will have to before sorting you will have to uh, like keep a track of its indexes and at that particular index you will uh, like just put the value of b1 b2 b3 in sorted order right so let me just show you the code for this particular problem now so uh, this problem was not uh, difficult i believe just had to observe this particular thing that the value of k is not actually required and you can just divide the problem into smaller sub problems so what i've done is i've created two vector of pairs and a of n and b of n so a and b are of are vectors of size n right now just take input in both of them and first element is the array element itself and the second element is the index right now i just sort both of them and i just initialize my answer of size vector of size n and i just loop through all the values and this will be the index so a of i dot second second is equal to b of i dot first 
right so if a of i dot second will be equal to b of i dot first a of i dot second will denote the index of the current element that was actually in the correct origin order and b of i dot first will denote the corresponding element from the array b now i can just print all the values from my answer vector right so this will be the solution for the second problem now uh, let us discuss the third problem this particular problem says that we have been given an array b of positive integers right now we want to form an array b of size n now we have to form the array such that uh, like all of them have the same parity right so all the elements from b should have the same parity that means either all of them should be odd or all of them should be even right so this is our problem so let us just directly discuss what this problem says so basically we have to form an array b and we have discussed the conditions of array b that is the parity of all the elements should remain same and all of them should be greater than zero so how do we form array b so in array b array of uh, like b of i will be equals to a of i or it can also be equals to a of i minus some a of j so j can be any position right we are free to choose any position in the array right so a b of i should be either equals to a of i or b of i should be either equals to a of i minus a of j so if all the elements in the array a were even we can directly write all the elements in this with this uh, condition if all the elements were odd in array a, we can directly again write all the elements of array a in b now if some of them are odd some of them are even then the only possible case is to subtract two values right so we know if we subtract even and even it will not change the parity it will remain even if we subtract odd and odd it will not change the parity and it will remain odd if we subtract even and odd it will change the parity to odd so our only best shot is to take one even number and one odd number right so at every position when there is an even number we will try to take an odd number and subtract it from it and uh, like uh, the resulting will be odd so at the end we will be having an array of all odd numbers the thing is we always want that uh, all the elements should be greater than zero right so even the even number that i am currently taking minus the odd number that i take should be greater than zero so that means this particular odd number should be less than this particular even number so i can just uh, like compare directly compare what is the smallest even number and what is the smallest odd number if the smallest even number is even less than the smallest odd number then the answer will never be possible because there will exist one element in the array b for which uh, i can uh, i cannot calculate even minus odd because if i do it the smallest odd number i take the smallest odd number the whole value will be less than zero right so i can just directly check what is the smallest even number and what is the smallest odd number if the smallest even number is even less than the smallest odd number then the answer will not be possible otherwise the answer is always possible so let us have a look at the code now so for this particular problem what i have done is i have taken uh, a vector of size n and i have taken input in it i have created two vectors odd and even which will store the odd and even values respectively so i am just pushing the values in the odd and even vectors now i have sorted both of them so if either size of odd is equal to n or size of even is equal to n in this case the answer will be yes that means all the values are either odd or all the values are either even right now i check if even is less than odd that means the smallest element in even is, small, is less than the smallest element in odd then the answer will be no otherwise the answer will always be yes so let us discuss the next problem which is flipper so like this particular problem uh, was uh, a bit on the implementation heavy side and we will discuss how we can solve this problem so basically let us just uh, uh, directly discuss what the problem statement says in a quick summary so let's say we have been given an array and right? there will be some elements in the array now we are allowed to perform exactly one operation remember we have to perform exactly one operation right now in this one operation what we can do is we can choose some sub array right for example i have chosen this sub array so uh, let's say uh, 3 1 was here right so i have to reverse all the elements of this sub array so it will become 1 3 i have to take let's say this is x and this is y this is z i have to take all the elements from the back to the front and all the elements from the front to the back right so all the elements which were present to the right of it right of this particular sub array will come to the front let's say this was x and all the elements that were present to the left of this sub array will come to the back so it will be y z so remember the ordering of this these two sub arrays will not change only this this middle sub array will get reversed right so we have to find like uh, such op uh, one operation such that the final resultant permutation is maximum right is lexicographically maximum so and we have to perform exactly one operation so obviously if you want to make uh, the uh, array element or the array lexicographically maximum 
one of the most optimal approach will be uh, let's say there are n elements and it let so i just forgot to mention it that uh, the elements will be a permutation right you need to take care of this that the elements will be a permutation and we are uh, like solving this question according to that particular uh, thing uh, keeping that particular thing in mind only right so the array elements will be in the range 1 to n so if i want to make the uh, like the array lexicographically maximum it is always like reasonable to take the element n at the front position right so obviously i would want the element n to be at the front position so that means if let's say this was my array element right if n was present here then i would always want that the sub array that i was taking to reverse can be either this or either this sub array right because in if if it is one of those what will happen this particular sub array will reverse itself and this particular value will come at the front right here so that is why if the position of n uh, anywhere i find it i would always want that the sub array should be from here right should be from the left of it so since the value or like the constraints are very small it is up to 10 to the power 3 what we can do is we can find the position of n what is the position of n and for each of those sub arrays i can form a sub array like this then i can form a sub array like this and even if there were more elements i would have formed a sub array of size 3 then i would have checked for a sub array of size 4 i can just brute force through all of these sub array sizes and find the most optimal answer right so what i would want to do is i would want to put this particular value in the front that is why i am taking uh, any sub array starting from the left of it now this will not work this will obviously not work when the element is present at the leftmost position right when the element n is present at the leftmost position already so in that particular case we will have to look for the n minus 1th element so let's say n was present here and n1 n minus 1 was present somewhere here so in that particular case i will apply the same logic that i have just discussed and like uh, the same logic applies here that i will try to reverse this particular part right and try to form my best answer now uh, like there were some edge cases on this particular problem that the cases that you will have to deal separately let's say n was present here and n minus 1 was present here right so if we try to take this particular sub array right any sub array starting from this particular position this this can lead to a suboptimal answer and the answer will not be the most optimal so what we instead do is now we try to take as long as this particular value is greater than the first value we will try to take this sub array now if n minus 2 was present here i will try to take this particular sub array why because if i take the sub array like this then n will present l will be like this will be part will be reversed and this whole array will get to the end now when this happens n will be present at the first position then n minus 1 and n minus 2 right and this part as it is will come here so why like why we are trying to extend this particular sub array uh, why because this will give us some more optimal answer and till how long will you have to extend till this particular uh, like this v of i is greater than or equal to v of 0 right and how how do we know this that we need to do this because like if v of i is this and v of 0 is this right after like after performing this operation v of 0 will come at this position and v of i will be among one of these right so you see because v of i is greater than v of 0 it should come before v of 0 right to find the maximum lexicographically maximum answer right so this was just a little edge case that uh, i wanted to discuss and it is also given in the one of the test cases that uh, you will see the fifth test case is some somewhat like this and uh, uh, like uh, i would say very honestly if this test case was not given in the sample test case like uh, a lot of people would have uh, submitted many wrong attempts on this particular problem right so you had to deal this edge case separately now let me just show you the code of this particular problem so what i've done is i have created a vector v of size n and i've taken input in it and i'm uh, marking the start element right the other position of the start element so if v of 0 is equal to n then that means the start element would be n minus 1 so i'm just uh, finding the maximum element that will be n minus 1 in the remaining vector so i'm starting from v of big n plus 1 till v of n and minus v of big n otherwise i'll search the position of the maximum element in the whole vector so what will this will do is if v of 0 is equals to n right in that case i will find the position of n minus 1 otherwise i will find the position of n and this will be stored in the start variable now if start is equals to n minus 1 again before before starting this part what i am doing is i am taking i am taking the vector v and i am sorting all the values of the vector v why this because uh, at the end what i will be doing is i will be taking the maximum of answer comma some current vector right and uh, in case uh, like the original vector was already greater than some other vector that I, uh, the current vector 
then this value might not get updated right so i'm just taking the smallest value that is possible now uh, what i do is i just check whether the start element that i am discovering is at the last position in that particular case what i am doing is i am finding another position right from uh, till which i will be taking a sub array so in this particular case when the start element is present in the last position i will try to make a sub array as discussed i'll take the last element and i'll keep on extending to the left right so this is what i am trying to find what is the maximum position till which i have to extend so so this is the index starting from zero right and i am setting current of index plus plus as p of star so basically i am trying to put all the values of from the start position into current of index so index will get incremented by 1 and start will get decremented so while v of start is greater than v of 0 so this is what i have already discussed while the element at the current index is greater than the first element then i'll push it uh, like i'll add it to my answer and then decrement the value of start so i'm trying to extend the uh, like uh, the range to the left now once i have done it uh, i'll push all the ele remaining elements from the start uh, into the current vector now i just set my answer as maximum of answer comma current right if this was not the case then obviously i will try to start forming my sub array from from the left of the uh, maximum element right so in this particular case i have done i is equals to start minus 1 until i is greater than minus 1 i am trying to form different sub arrays right so i am initializing again a current vector i am starting my index with zero again what i am doing is uh, all the elements that were present after the start uh, uh, variable right after the start position will be stored initially then all the reverse elements and the, mm, all the remaining elements starting from the zeroth index. So again, I just take maximum of answer comma current. So since like uh, the values were very small, there were only a thousand values. I was able to get away with this particular thing uh, because uh, like this thing, when I uh, print the output line for error recovery, right, for checking my error, for debugging my code, this particular thing can give you TLE at many times. But I was lucky that this gave me, didn't give me TLE and I was saved from some wrong penalties. So, right, uh, in the next iteration, I will de decrement my value of i and I'll move on further. And at the end, I can just print the value of my answer. So, right, uh, I know that this video is getting pretty long, but we just have two problems left and uh, we'll discuss this particular part also. Now, in this particular problem, what we have is, uh, let me just directly explain you the problem because uh, like uh, discussing the problem segments takes too much time. So, we'll directly discuss the problem. Now, uh, uh, in this problem, they were we were being given an array right we have been given an array like this so basically this is person one person two person three person four person five now uh, there will be some people in the which will be performing in groups so each group will have at least two people right and they will be uh, like performing in a circular fashion so if two people are there they will be performing like this right so the, let's say this is the left hand this is the right hand this is the right hand this is the left hand right this is the hands of the two people and they are like connected like this. So if there are three people, they will be connected like this, right, in a circle. If there are four people, they will be connected like this. Sorry. Like this. Right. So this is how they are forming circles and they will be performing in groups. So unfortunately, what has happened is, so all of the people remember uh, to which person one of their hands were connected, but they forgot to which other person their hands were connected, right. So they know the information of one side only. Now for each uh, per people, for each of the persons, we have been given that information that if uh, person 1 has one hand connected to person x1, person 2 has one hand connected to person x2 like this, right. So we have to form what is the uh, minimum number of groups and what is the maximum number of groups that is possible in this particular case. So you see uh, what we can do is this will uh, essentially form some groups like this, right. Some of this, these groups will be open and some of these groups will be closed. Right. So we will have at the end, if we like connect all of them in a graph in, and we, if we try to form a graph, like all of this uh, would look something like this. So all of the connections that are open, all of the groups that are open. Right. What you can do with them is you can just take this and this either connect it like connect them like this. Right. So this will be one cycle. Right. Or the other way, what you could do is you can just connect them by themselves. So in this case, there will be two cycles. Right. So uh, like what we have observed is let, let us denote the number of open components. Right. So the number of open components means that they do not have a loop or they are open. Right. So if there are X number of open components, that means the minimum answer can be one and the maximum answer can be X. Right. But if you have some closed components, 
no matter what we do the value will not change because this comp co component cannot attach to any other component either so it will not form a bigger component and it is already fixed right so let me just we'll have two values fixed and open so fixed will be the number of connected components which have a closed loop and open will be the number of connected components which have an open open side right that means they do not form a loop so if this this value will always be fixed in my maximum value and in my minimum value so i am writing the minimum value is equal to fixed and maximum value is equal to fixed as well right so if there is at least one open component if there is at least one open component then it will contribute one to my answer otherwise it will contribute zero to my answer so if there are any number of open components i can always attach them to form a single component like this right so even if there is one open component it will uh, uh, like give one to in my minimum answer it will contribute one in my minimum answer otherwise it will contribute zero to my minimum answer and for to find the maximum answer i'll have to add the value of fixed and the number of open components why because for all of the open components i can just close them and i can try to maximize my answer so minimum value will be equal to fixed plus either zero or one one will be when there is at least one open component otherwise it will be zero and the maximum value will be equal to fixed plus open so basically we just have to find the connected components and how many of them form a closed loop and how many of them are open right so let me just show you the code for this particular problem so the page is loading and uh, here we have it so what i have done is i have created a vector v of size uh, n so i am taking input into this vector and i will be creating graphs of size n right so for each of the values i am decrementing v of i by 1 to take zero, zero based indexing there is no other reason and I'm just pushing the value into my graph. Now I've created a visited vector and I'm tracking the count of fixed and open, right? So what I do is I'll for all of the values that are not visited, I just visit them. And if this returns true, that means that there is not a loop. I'll increment my open value. Otherwise I'll increment my fixed value. So how do I check whether, the, whether there is a loop? I just pass node and parent and I just uh, mark my current node as visited. Now I initialize my value of okay with one. That is true. Now I just try to visit all the children and if the current children is not visited, I'll just visit it and my OK will be and is equals to DFS of the children. So what I'm essentially doing is even if one of the children return a false value, that means even if one of the children has encountered a loop, then my whole answer will be false and I will, that is why I'm taking and. And if the child is already visited and it is not equal to parent, right? So in an undirected graph, this is how you find loops. If the child is already visited and it is not equal to the parent, then in that case, that means you have found a loop and then just directly set the value of OK as zero. So at the end, I'll just return OK and OK when OK is true. That means the current uh, connected component doesn't have a loop. Otherwise, if OK is false, the current connected component has a loop, right? So when I just count the number of open and fixed components, so the minimum value will be equal to fixed plus if open is there, that means there is at least one open component then the value contributed will be one. Otherwise, the value contributed will be zero. And in the, if I try to maximize my answer, the answer will be fixed plus open. Right. So this was the solution of this particular problem. Now let us uh, have a look at the final problem of this problem discussion. So this particular problem uh, says that we have been given an array. Right. So what we essentially have to do is uh, we have to select some values from the array. Right. So we'll be able to select only M values. So we have to select exactly M values from the array. Now all the values should be pairwise distinct and the level between uh, like uh, the difference between the maximum and the minimum value should be strictly less than M. So like I made a mistake while analyzing this particular problem, but you will realize it is much simpler. So uh, let's say there are some values A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Right. So what you have to do is you have to select some values from it. Right. So a valid pair or a valid group will be of size M. Right. So you have to select M values such that the difference between the maximum and the minimum value is strictly less than M. So it, it should be at max M minus one. Right. And we have to find the number of valid groups we can form like this. So basically if the first value is one and you will observe that if the size of the group is four, then I can take only this particular group. 1, 2, 3, 4. There is no other way I can form a group. This is the only way I can form a group because in this case, 4 minus 1 will be 3, right? Which is the maximum possible or the maximum permissible value. So if I have any index x and my value of m is like this, then the only group that I'll be able to form is x comma x plus 1 comma x plus 2 comma x plus 3 and so on up to x plus n, right? 
So this is the only group that I can form. So basically what I have to do is I just have for any possible group, I have to multiply the frequency of x, then frequency of x plus 1, then frequency of x plus 2, then frequency of x plus 3 and so on. Right. So if I for like multiply all these frequencies, then I'll be able to find the number of possible ways starting from the position x. Then I'll have to repeat the same thing for position x plus 1. Then I'll have to repeat the same thing from, for position x plus 2. Obviously, repeating for all the positions is not possible because it will lead to an O of n square loop. So what we'll essentially do is we'll try to maintain two pointers. So let's say we have some value x, then we have x plus 1 or let me just write numbers that way so that it is easier to read. So if we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and let's say the uh, size of the group is 3. So what you did was you took the first three elements and just multiplied their frequencies. Right. Now you have the answers for all the values starting from 1. Right. Now what if you want to extend your array? So obviously you can multiply like this particular value to your answer, the value 4. But now to remove the value contributed by this particular one, you have to divide for example, for example, initially your answer was C. So now you multiply the frequency of F of uh, fourth element. So to make your to remove one from your answer, you will have to divide the frequency of first element. Right. So this is that you have, this is something that you have to take care of. Now the problem with this thing is uh, the whole of uh, all the operations are working in modulo. Right. So you cannot just directly divide, you can multiply uh, like C into F of 4 and then you can take mod, mod of it, but you cannot directly divide F of 1. Right. So to divide F of 1, you will have to take the modular multiplicative inverse of F of 1 and that you can calculate by raising mod minus 2. So you have to, you will have to find this particular value and multiply this value with C. So C into this particular value and then taking mod will help you to find the value that we were finding in these two operations. Right. So this is something that you will have to take care of. Now, next thing is like this is this was something when the chain is continuing. But for example, 1, 2, 3 was here and the next element was 8. So you will not be able to form 2, 3, 4. Right. What do we do in this particular case? In this particular case, we know that no matter what number we take, even if we try to start from 3, we will not be able to form our answer. So instead, uh, initially our left pointer was here, we directly jump our left pointer to this particular position. Right. And then we try to form the same thing. Right. Then we try to form m consecutive elements by sliding window or just taking two pointers simply. I'll extend my pointer here, right pointer here, then right pointer here. And let's say this, this is the three group that we form. Then I'll extend my right pointer here and my left pointer will advance to this particular position. Let's say 12 was not present here, directly 15 was present. Then I'll just directly move my left pointer to this particular position. Right. So this is what we have to do and we'll keep adding the answers to our, our final answer. Right. So let me just show you the code so that it is easier for you to understand what I just said. And again, this problem also was a bit heavier, heavier on the implementation. So you will have to take care what you do. Right. So what I'm doing is I am taking two values n and m and I'm uh, creating a vector of size n and I'm just sorting all the values in the vector. So I'm creating a map and I'm incrementing the frequency of all the values. Now I initialize my answer with zero and my current value with one. And again, the count will be equal to zero. So I wanted to take it. I wanted to take m consecutive elements. So this count variable will help me to take care of that or keep, to keep track of how many elements I have taken till now. So I'll, uh, so I have named my left pointer as v of zero. So this will be the leftmost variable. And I have like, uh, while, like while coding the problem or while implementing it, I just took the right pointer as p, right? So it will also be equal to v of zero initially. While left plus m minus one, that means if I'm trying to take uh, m consecutive value starting from left, if all the values lie in the range or the maximum value of the vector v, then only then I will continue my loop, right? So as soon as I, I enter my loop, I just check two conditions. Either this, this might be true, that count is equal to m. That means I have taken m consecutive elements or this might be true that the next element that I want to take is not present in my vector. So if, if I have already taken m consecutive values, so I'll update my answer as answer plus current, right? So I'm using mod at this is just a simple uh, modular function I'll, I'll just show you here. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a mod m, b mod m, I'm just returning a plus b mod m, right? So this is just simple addition stuff. Now I'm just trying to calculate the inverse of the left pointer, right? So the element present in the left pointer. Why? Because now I need to divide the frequency of the left uh, left element, right? Or the element present at the left pointer. So first I calculated inverse and then I just multiply its value with the current 
right? So I'm multiplying current and inverse, right? So this is how you divide while dealing with modular operations. I'll increment my left pointer and I'll decrement the value of count. So if I have already taken, uh, let's say, uh, three elements that I want you to take. Now, since I have incremented my left pointer, now I only have two elements that I have and I also need to consider the third elements. So that is why I have decremented the value of my count. Now, if this was not the case, we entered this particular if condition when P, the value P was not found. So what I'll do is I'll just do binary search on the map F and I'll find the smallest value greater than P. So I just take it into my left variable or the left pointer and I also set my right pointer as equals to the left pointer. Again, uh, while uh, as it was in the case when I was uh, starting my answer, the count value will be equal to 0 and the current value will be equal to 1. If either of them uh, was executed, I'll just continue to the next iteration. Now, uh, what I'll do is since I want to add the next value to my current answer, I update my current answer as current into frequency of the pointer P. So this is the right pointer essentially. And I'll increment my value of count to indicate that I've taken one more element and I'll increment my value of P, right? So this is advancing the right pointer. So after all of this has been completed, I can just return print my final answer. So this uh, was the solution of uh, the first six problems of code forces uh, round, which was it for division three. I was, uh, I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video. Uh, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It's always free of cost. And you can always subscribe later if you don't find the videos interesting. Do share the channel with your friends. Until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye-bye.